Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Gamini Kirawala, for this invitation. Uh, it is really important that we, among South Asian uh, institutes, uh, talk about how our lives have been changed. Uh, so perhaps, you know, I'm giving you um, a country perspective at this moment, but probably in subsequent webinars, we can sit down together and talk about a South Asian approach to it. Um, so like many other countries, Pakistan was also not prepared for the impacts of COVID-19 and how far reaching that they might be. When our universities and schools closed in mid-March, not a single one of us thought that we wouldn't be returning to our schools and campuses. Not a single one of us knew how the lockdown and quarantine would affect all of us. Mid-March, we went home, took a break, thinking it would be a shorter one. Little did we know that this pandemic was to take to think innovatively and come up with solutions for continued education. Campus was off limits, but creativity wasn't. And we bounced back and it didn't take more than a month for us to settle down with this new fact that COVID wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. As faculty and students were introduced to virtual learning environment, we got to know what Zoom was, what Moodle was, and how to integrate and convert our course outlines to online deliverables. The Higher Education Commission of Pakistan asked universities to self-report their readiness. And this self-reporting has since been shared with the public. So far out of 174 universities that we have, 138 have submitted their information and it is available online, whereas the remainder of the universities have yet to submit their readiness reports. But that's a starter and these are encouraging stats. Are we ready in Pakistan for the new form of online education across the board, across all levels of education? For this, I have three broad points to make here. Number one, I don't think both public and uh, public and regulators are ready for a completely online or virtu virtual education system. Since I work at a university, I can tell you that a pure online university will never have the credibility in our country and the Higher Education Commission will not support such a model to operate. However, I do see a traditional university offering some purely online courses, mostly in postgraduate area, which could be a starter. But once again, the regulators will be a problem. There are several issues that Pakistan faces here. Number one is internet connectivity across the board. Available to everyone across Pakistan is a huge issue. Internet access in Pakistan stands at around 35%, with 78 million broadband and 76 million mobile internet connections that are 3G or 4G. Pakistan has been ranked 76 out of 100 countries on the Inclusive Internet Index 2020 that was released by Economist Intelligence Unit, falling in the last quartile of the global index overall. We have had students from Balochistan, from rural areas of Punjab, from Gilgit and Baltistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province who have had to take classes out in the open near cell phone towers in some cases having to walk several miles to reach those cell phone towers just so they could complete their spring semester that was offered online by their university. So internet connectivity for all is a major issue going forward and I'm not talking about fiber optics connectivity here, just basic 2G is not available to all. The Higher Education Commission has been working with some cell phone companies to make their connectivity better offer student bundles with better data limits, et cetera. But that's a start. Some are on board, some still working on the idea of lowering the bundles for students, but we have a long, long way to go. The students in remote areas rightly protested to their right to internet and the government being responsible for them missing out sessions or not passing exams just because they could not upload their assignments online. So that's a huge issue. Important to say that Pakistan is not new to virtual education. Pakistan has had a virtual university since 2002, which has its own educational broadcast TV channel where all lectures are available. In 2008, they placed all their lectures on YouTube as well. 
their enrollment crossed 100,000 mark in 2012. So that's one model available perhaps, which can be replicated more MOUs can be signed between regular universities and that virtual university. We also have had long distance. Lama Iqbal opened university since 1974. And when it was opened, it was the second open university in the world, first in Asia and Africa, but that was a long distance learning model. My second point, pertains to the other end of this argument of not being ready, if not now, then when? If we don't embrace this, I'm afraid that international universities will start to offer their online programs in Pakistan. And since our regulators won't be able to police them, it will severely affect local institutions. This is already happening with the University of London offering distance learning programs running in Pakistan. Now that the universities around the world are going online for the next academic year starting fall, we will see a rise in international universities seeking local organizations to recruit students for them. This will definitely shake the local universities across Pakistan if the student has the option of getting an international degree sitting in Pakistan at half the cost, no visa hassle, no leaving home, adjusting to the reality of the pandemic, making both the parents and students happy to have this option. My third point is, I fear that once we go back to the traditional on-campus system, we will forget everything we have learned in the COVID era. Ideally, what Pakistan needs is a transformation from a technology-based learning, which is currently happening, to a technology-assisted learning approach where we continue to use the tools we have acquired now to enrich classroom teaching experience. We need to consider this as an opportunity to catch up with the world, which is way ahead of us in use of technology in the classroom. So here's my solution. We are asking the wrong question if we want to know how new technology can replace classic school or university experiences. The need is to rethink a pedagogical approach that provides us the best combination of human and technological aspects of education. It is only then that we can transform our educational system, preparing millions of students for the fourth industrial revolution and to deliver what? The ultimate benefit of education, which is social mobility. The role of regulators, I believe, those who regulate, uh, regulate education needs to change. They are the ones that need to become creative to allow and accept creativity and new ways of learning. But freedom of thought is important. In order for us to change our relationship with technology, regulators need to change to allow for that change to happen. We, the educators and the academics and the school teachers need to tell our policy makers what we want and how we want it. Without influencing policy in a post COVID world, no change will be embraced no solutions will be generated. We need an agile governance model for regulating technology and making constant adjustments with this evolution. And to accept that technology transfers in education will go beyond Zoom. I'll conclude by saying this, the greatest social injustice of any industrial revolution is those who are left out. In Pakistan, millions don't have internet connectivity and they are at a disadvantage. Perhaps that is the first place we need to start before we gear up for online education for all. Technology needs to empower us, the humans. As Klaus Schwab said, there is a blurring of lines between physical, digital, and biological in this fourth industrial revolution. Are we in South Asia thinking about the possibility of connectivity in a borderless virtual world? Perhaps once we have used technology to empower us at home, we'll start building regional connections as well. Even sky is not the limit to what can be achieved. I'd like to stop here and looking forward to discussion. Thank you.